This is Leon Drew with the Crypto Crew. I'm talking to Terry Schnell, who lives in Texas now. He's had some different incidences through his life, and uh, he's going to tell us about those. So, first, Terry, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, your name, age, where you're from, and where you're living now, and where you had those incidences at. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Terry Schnell. Uh, you know, I'm 46 years old now. Uh, I live uh, in Texas, down kind of near Dallas. Um, my first, you know, instance with this, uh, with, with, you know, seeing a Bigfoot is West Virginia, a little town called National, which is right outside of Morgantown, West Virginia. So... Okay, you mentioned back in 1984 you had uh, an experience uh, with what you think was a, a Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Can you tell me about that, please? Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is in the dark, and we, you know, we live in a trailer, and uh, back up against this hill. So right behind my trailer is, uh, there, there's really, like, I'm not kidding, it's like six feet off the back of the trailer. It, it starts going uphill. There's a, it's just all thicket back in here. So just give you an idea of what where the sound was coming from. So we're in the we're in our tra- you know, we're in the trailer. We're just having a you know, regular regular and I I think we're what you want that maybe fourteen years old. So there's basically three fourteen year old kids in the house. Me, my brother and, and our neighbor. And what time of year and, was this? You know what? I thought about I think this was in July. Okay. And um so it's summertime I know we're out of school. Uh, I, I thought about it before. I, I, I wish I could nail that one down exactly for you, but I think it was July. Um, so we're in the house, and just out of the blue, so we're in this trailer, by the way, all right? So you, the walls are not very thick on the little trailer. And um, so we're in the trailer. And, and mind you, right, we're, we're hunters. As kids, we are hunters. So we're, we're very familiar with what lives out there in the woods. I, I hunted all the time. Never, ever heard this before, by the way. But so we're in the trailer. And we start hearing this woman screaming. At least that's what we thought. And at first it starts screaming, and we're doing our thing in the house, and you're not really paying much attention to it except that you hear this sound, right? But then it gets louder, and it gets louder, and the duration gets longer. And at this point, maybe 30 minutes into this screaming, I'm like, what's going on? What, what is that? So I stepped out onto the porch, and we had this covered porch, and it, it's like back right up against that same hill, and I, I stick my head out of there off the porch, it's the covered porch, and I look back up in the thicket area where the sound is coming from, and it, it, it's probably not, it, it couldn't have been any further than 30 or 40 yards, I mean, from where I was at, up in this, on the hill, and the hill's completely dark, and this is out in, you know, the hills of West Virginia, where there's, there's no lights back there, there's no nothing, I mean, you, you can hide back there, and no one had ever seen it in the dark. Um, so this thing is just screaming at the top of this lung. And it's a very deep guttural, what is what people refer to that sound. I, I remember it being like that, but at the time I didn't have a definition for it. Um, but it sounded like a woman screaming. I mean, it was just high pitched. It went from a low tone to a very high pitched, long duration. And uh, I got a little scared at that point. So I went back to the house and loaded up a gun and put one at every door. <laughs> I just scared me. Um, we were all just wondering what that sound was. And it went on for at least 15 minutes. Um, at this time, I had no idea what it was. Never related it to a Bigfoot or anything like that. I just thought that in the morning we were going to go up there and find it, you know, someone would have gotten butchered up there, you know, you know I mean, but uh, the next day when we kind of, kind of went up on the hill to kind of look around a little bit, there was, you know, we didn't see anything, there was nothing there, um, you know, so we just went about our lives, and that, that, that was, that was the end of that, I guess. Right, that, that sounds a little, uh, yeah, 14 years old, it, it, it definitely will uh, make you think twice of what you're hearing in the woods. Now, you, you said it sounded like a woman screaming. Have you ever heard a fox howling at night? It didn't sound like that, did it? Yeah, now, now like I said, with years, no, years later I went, you know, this time, and like I told you, you know, when you and I talked offline, that 
you know, I'm trying to familiarize myself with, you know, my own therapy for all this, but I went and looked up Dixon and Foxes or whatever, female Foxes, and found some really good recordings. And uh, it sounded absolutely nothing like a fox. Absolutely nothing. It was it was so far from the way a fox sounds. Uh, uh, I mean, the only comparison would be is that their sound. I mean, the, a fox can scream a little bit, but this one's way, way, way different from a fox. Right. Way different. A fox would never be able to do what this thing was doing. Totally. I mean, a human being couldn't do what this thing was doing. Right. So you, the the volume of it, uh, now you mentioned before when we were talking that it, uh, it kind of vibrated the whole trailer. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I, I don't know that it vibrated the whole trailer per se, but since the trailer walls were so thin that the noise difference between me being inside the trailer and me being on the porch were very minuscule. I mean, right. So it, it literally just, was able to penetrate the trailer with very little drop in, in uh, decibels. I mean, it, it was, I wish I knew, you know, how to put a decibel sound to it, but that, I don't know that I could do that. But it, it was, right. I, it was, no, I it was, that. Now, um, black. did you, uh, you said you felt really scared. Uh, did you have any other symptoms or feelings when this was going on? No, th thankfully I didn't. I had nothing, other than being scared, and perplexed about what that is, that was it. I mean, I, I was, uh, you know, I had enough um, faculties about me to go, you know, to be able to think about what could be going on back there and then dreaming up a scenario of what I thought was going on back there right. and protecting ourselves. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, kind of offline, uh, you know, I, I once I loaded up a couple of guns and put them by our doors, we had three doors on the house, so I had three guns at each door. Well, um, I can understand doing that. That was definitely a 14 years old. Um, yeah, you know. exactly. And I'm in there with two other guys, and we're all looking at one another like, what is that? You know? But I'm the only one that's actually doing something about it. You know, I'm another <laughs> taking control of the situation. Right. Uh, you well, know, after, like I said, this went off for about 15 minutes, and I, I did. I, I called up my, I finally called up my stepdad. And there was a little bar off, off the hill down there, and that's where he was at. He wasn't a half a mile from the house, and I called him up. And I was like, hey, there's, you know, it sounds like someone's being killed back here, you know? I, I, mean, it, you know, I didn't have to talk, cause I, I didn't know how else to describe it other than the closest thing that I could put it to was a woman screaming. Right. And the closest sound possible that I could describe it to, but the duration and the sound of that party, the duration of it and the pitch and the lowness of it were way beyond, I know now, were way beyond what a human could be. Right. You know, anyway, I called him up. He's like, oh, it's just a mountain lion. You know, that's, I'm, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, mountain lion my butt. <laughs> no mountain lion. Right. So, you, at, at that time, you'd probably heard a mountain lion more than once in your life. You know what? Surprisingly, I grew up in Arizona, and that's the only place I've ever heard one. So, and, and like I said, in West Virginia, I was lucky enough and fortunate enough, I feel, to see a mountain lion. The mountain, you know, now, those woods up there are so thick, and there's so many of them, and the hills are so steep that, um, you know, in my opinion, you know, a mountain lion can live up in there, and you would never see them. I mean, right. and, uh, but I, I, I'd come off the hill and walk down the railroad track, and that mountain lion was walking one direction on the railroad track, and I was walking the other. <laughs> so, and that was the only way I was ever going to see a mountain lion like that. Right. You mentioned you had another incident in West Virginia. Also, uh, you tell me about that. Okay. So yeah. So this is. So this is in 1986. So two years later, we're, we're winding forward. Uh, that was years later that I was able to put two and two together. Right. What the sound was or whatever. But so in 1986, yeah, I'm 16 somewhere in there, and uh. I hunted, boat hunted up on top of the, this field that's above our house, right behind our house on that same hill, uh, except probably 200 yards, 250 to, 250 to 300 yards behind, up a hill behind my house is a field. And there's a house way at the other end of it. It's a big open field that it's several hundred yards long and probably a couple hundred yards wide with an opening gap that leads into a, uh, Clear cut area where the 
the trees are in an old telegraph power line that runs through there. Right. And a power line that runs through there. So it's easy for me to walk up behind my house and go behind. It's a pretty simple thing for me to do. So we pull up in the truck that evening. It's around 4.30 or something like that. And I have a whole lot of time to, to you know, mess around. You know, it's your bow and go or whatever. But um, well, I get out of the truck. And I remember telling my father-in-law, hey, I'm going to run up on the hill. He's going to deer. I'm going to run back down here and grab my bow. Which is surprising because normally I would grab my bow, but in this case, I just ran up on the hill with nothing. I don't, I don't know why I decided to do that, but, but I did. So, uh, so I'm, I'm walking up on the hill, and I'm just walking at a normal pace. There's uh, clear-cut areas where they drug logs out of there. So I'm, you know, traversing these, you know, these little cuts and stuff to, to get up on the hill. So when the field opens up, I'm looking at that just because that's when you're going to start seeing deer. It's been the evening, and they're going to they're going to be doing the same thing I'm doing at this point. They're heading to that field, so I'm I'm you know walking and looking, walking and looking, walking and looking. And uh, so often, as, as I get up near the hill, I'm maybe 30, 30 yards looking up the hill, and at the end of that thirty yard area would be where that field would start. And off to my right, where my deer stand was, and there's like line here, and that's where that field ends. And where I'm looking at is an open area, though. There's no trees or nothing. It's just an open field that dumps off into this, you know, this clear-cut area. And off to my left, I see something moving. So I stop, and I look, and, you know, and a fear came over me. <laughs> you know, like I said, I don't know how to describe the fear, but you know, I knew immediately what I was looking at. I mean, I mean, I'm a 70s kid, and I saw those Bigfoot movies as a kid, uh, but I never was thinking about this at 16. It was not on my mind or nothing like that, but I immediately my brain put that together in a hundredth of a second. And I see this big, huge head and up to the shoulders. Now, everything below that, because the hill's steep enough that the, the, the brush and the hill thickness was covering everything below that. And, and I didn't want to step forward anymore because I was so scared. Right. And I remember thinking to myself, I remember thinking to myself, do not stare at me. You know, I remember thinking, do not turn and look at me because I will die right here. I'll have a heart attack. Yep. I remember thinking that. And that was the weirdest thing to have a thought like that. When you saw this, uh, you tell us uh, maybe what you estimated the height to be and the width and maybe the, the color of the the hair or the fur? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so I, I'm thinking it was easily seven to eight feet tall. I mean, it was easily seven to eight feet tall. And I could see the, the backdrop for me was the sky. So I had, it, it was standing there, but it was actually strolling, like I said. It was, it was actually strolling. It, was, it wasn't taking real big steps, but it was walking. And, uh, uh, I could see uh, the, the the color, the, the sun, uh, at the angle of the sun, it was actually able to highlight the hair. And that's that's the one main thing that I saw from, you know, so clear was the, the, the how well-groomed this thing was. Now, at the time, I wasn't thinking that it was well-groomed. You know, wasn't, that wasn't what was crossing my mind. But looking back now, I'm able to describe that that way. Right. Um, and it, it had no, I could not see the ear. Its ear, it was, ear was completely covered by hair. At the time, I would, if you would have asked me, I wouldn't hear, I couldn't even told you whether it had an ear or not. But being that it had a head, and it had shoulders, now I could see the shoulders up. And, and now as it strolled another 20 yards, like I said, to the left of me, I started seeing less and less of it, right? And, uh, but the parts that I could see were, with a head, for example, sitting on the shoulders, there was absolutely no neck. And the hair, the, the hair color, by the way, was, uh, was you know, I, I guess as they describe it as auburn, but, it was, but this was more, but this had a lot of gray in it. I could see the gray mixed in with the auburn hair. I mean, it was plain as day. I mean, it was, it was like walking into the barber shop. And you're looking at someone's hair on their head. I can see it that plain. Right. Did you happen to get a look at the face at all, or? No, unfortunately, like I said, had I probably took a few more steps forward, it probably would have turned and recognized I was there. But as I knew it, the wind.
wind was blowing in my face, and it had no clue that I was back there because it couldn't smell me. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of now is that the reason why it didn't turn around and look was because I didn't move any forward. I didn't move any further forward, and the wind was blowing to my advantage. And what do you uh, think the distance you were from it? Uh, you know, I'm standing on my back porch right now, and I'm looking at this tree. Uh, uh, thirty yards. Okay. Thirty yards. Now, when I first spotted it, it was probably twenty yards. So it strolled at least ten yards, you know, away from me. Right. So, uh, so by the time that I, you know, it was still actually in my visual view when I decided to turn around and hightail it back down the hill. So, but let me describe the rest of it to you for you real quick. So, it had the most defining thing that I saw on it was the cone-shaped head. I mean, that was a dead giveaway, number one. This ain't no freaking bear. You know, I knew it wasn't no bear. Huh? <laughs> you know, just like every you know, other report you hear of hunters and stuff like that. They're like, Dude, that ain't no freaking bear. You know? And, I mean, I ain't even gonna go there. I mean, because it ain't no bear. Um, but it had this massive head. I mean, the head was so huge that if you were just to take the head alone and try to figure out how something that big and live in the woods and not be seen very often, that's just a shocking thing to think about. That's just the head alone. Now when you consider the entire body, how does it hide all that girth, weight, tallness, in the same woods that I've been hunting for years? That is amazing to me. Right. But you know what? There it is. How, how long it, do you it, estimate that you saw this creature, I mean, time-wise? Probably... Probably 30 seconds. I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot of time, but it didn't. But you know, 30 seconds is a long enough time for me to decide that what I'm looking at is not in my favor. <laughs> you know? And if it turns around and sees me, there's no telling what it might do. I mean, it was it was big enough. I could tell by looking at it. But like I described it earlier to you, though, let me I'll describe it again here real quick. It had enough definition on its shoulders and its arms and on its neck that I could see that it looked like a very well built. Um, you know, I, I think I described Arnold Schwarzenegger in his good day. Right. It looked like that, but with hair on it. But it was way, way bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. And this thing looked very, very healthy. Right. And it looked like it could have ripped me from limb to limb. How so, wide do you think it was at its shoulders? Uh, three and a half to four feet, for sure. Huge. It was huge. Uh, easily, easily that big. Three and a half to four feet. Now, um, you mentioned you saw that it was walking. Uh, can you describe the gait of its walk? Yeah, unfortunately, since it, like I said, since I was looking from shoulders up, I couldn't see any walking. What I could see moving was the shoulders and the head. Yeah, but I mean, how did that appear to you? Was it as smooth or was it... Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, in this case, like I said, looking back on it, I'm thinking he was doing the same thing that I was doing, looking for deer. Um... So he had a nice, smooth walk. His head didn't drop very much at all. It, right. Everything remained a really smooth. It, it may have bobbled a little bit. I mean, looking back in, in my memory, um, it may have bobbled a little bit. But I can see that his shoulders and stuff were looking like... I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at him to my left. And he's looking to his right. So his body is slightly turned to the right, looking kind of in front of him and all the way to the right, which is where that field was. So he, if had I walked up there five minutes prior to that, I would have caught him walking right in front of me. Right. You know, he was cruising that, he was cruising that field line. Yeah. It was the same thing I was doing. So I'm looking at him a three-quarter turn, shoulders up, and his full head. And the, my background is the sky. Right. The, the night uh, colored sky. It was at this point. It's five o'clock. The sun's near. I was only going to have at best forty minutes to hunt. Like I said, it's not very far behind my house, so I've got just enough time to catch an evening, an evening shit in my stand, right? Right. Yeah. So that's what this thing was doing. Uh, and what time of year was nice this? Walk. This was in October. Okay. Yeah. So this is in October. Right, so the uh, sun's usually down by five thirty, six o'clock. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, like I said, this was, what, 
follow-up to this recently. Uh, would you uh, t- tell me about that again, please? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so um, I-, I guess I'll have to put this in kind of some perspective, though. So, I'm going to you know, bring this this girl, uh, her, name is, her name is Adele, into the picture here real quick. Um, so, my brother posts some stuff on Facebook, and this girl that lived on the same hill back then, I, re- I remember being a teenager, uh, just like me, uh, replied back to my brother in response to, uh, 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 you know, my brother was posting some stuff online about, you know, uh, natural phenomena and different things. And she, she posted on there. I'm not even a friend with her on Facebook, but he, he posted on there. Uh, I'm sorry. She, he posted some stuff on there about uh, UFOs or some MUFON stuff or something or other. So this girl replies back to him. Hey, I've never seen a UFO before, but I've seen a ghost and I saw a Bigfoot. And I saw that post come up, and I was like, holy cow, so, and I knew that girl lived on the same hill, and I, I, I just felt so relieved, right, because I thought I was losing my own brain, because, you know, I'd seen this big creature on top of the hill with no one to validate it for me. So, uh, I call her up, you know, I, you know, I hook up with her on Facebook, call her up real quick, and uh, she tells me her story, and her story's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool in that she said, right behind your house, the first word that came out of her mouth, right behind your house. On the hill, we were up picking blackberries. And there's, there's a ton of blackberries up there. And she said, uh, we were in this thicket picking blackberries. And uh, my mother's with me, but she didn't want, want me or her mother went running down the hill to take a piss, she said. And she says, I'm still picking blackberries. And I look up to my left, and there's this big foot looking right at me. I didn't, you know, I, I asked her a couple questions about it. She's describing it to me. It was looking right at her, the, the same height, you know, seven to eight feet, uh, Except she got to see the face. She kind of just got, you had to ask her about that. But, you know, like, uh, but the, the good thing to me was just that someone was able to at least validate that, you know, hey, you know, there is a big put on that hill. And uh, she said, I thought I was losing my brain. You know, that's what she told me. And she said, I, I, I but now here's the deal is that she had this fear about her. She said, the tears were running down my eyes. I was so scared. And uh, the thing is just looking at me. And uh, she said, I can see it's big eyes. So I could see his big eyes and just went about describing the face and all that to me. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. I told her, you know, that, that's pretty neat that you got to see the face of it and all that. She said, oh, you know, I was scared of that. She was just screaming down my face. And uh, I turned to look to where my mother was at, you know, because I'm, you know, she's scary. You know, so her mother's not there because she'd scroll down the hill and you're your ass or hide behind a thicket or something. To use her ass or, And she just, when I turned back, uh, she's gone. So he had actually strolled in to her view without making a sound. And then as she turns around, just looks through her mother as she turns back around and, and strolled back off. So it's kind of her story. Now, that what that does for me is at least validate that, hey, there, there is a BF, you know, up behind my house. Right. And living on that big hill. And she, did she state to you how long ago it had been since that had happened? Yeah, you know what? I asked her about, now, I, I'll be... Obviously, there's still more than the story here, but, you know, I asked her that, what year was this? And she was unable to tell me. She, she had no idea. That, but it had to be somewhere between 86 and 88. And that's the only thing I can think of. But she said, I just don't I have an, I just, I just can't remember what year it was. She, she's unable to really, like I said, she had a hard time interpreting a few things. But she, she did pretty good about describing the fear she had and how long it was standing there in front of her and basically how tall it was and, you know, uh, for her though, she said she lived all these years thinking that she was crazy. You know, like, until I called her up and said, "Hey, you ain't crazy." You know, that thing was like there because I saw it. Um, and it put this in maybe a little bit more perspective. Moving forward, um, she still lives on the other side of that hill now, and her cousin lives on that same hill, only 
a couple houses down from where our trailer used to be. Our, our trailer that I live in is no longer there. It's just a flat area now. And, uh, but there's a house that was between us and their, and their, and their house. Well, her cousin, now this happened two weeks ago, and this is what, this is what spawned me to reach out to you guys. Because I find it interesting to know that, hey, here's an area where there's a Bigfoot recently seen and has been sighting so forth to so on for quite a while. Uh, well, her brother, her cousin stepped out of the house late at night. I have no idea what time it is. He just briefly told me, hey, I know you have an interest in this. And my cousin Buddy just saw what he's pretty sure was a Bigfoot last week. So her, her quick story to me on this was, was that he stepped out of the house kind of late at night, can't sleep. Uh, I don't know whether he smokes or not. Maybe he's out smoking a cigarette or whatever. But um, their house is probably a little less than a hundred yards from where our house used to be. So he's staring back in the dark, you know, uh, 30, 40 yards from the house next door to him and then another 30 yards or so maybe to where our house used to be. And he said he hears what sounds like a pipe dragging through the woods. And he thought, what is that? And, uh, he doesn't know what it is, but it's not like a pipe drag, and that's the only way you can describe it. And then, stepping up onto the road, right below our, one of our houses, is the old dirt road. And, um, he says this big black thing steps up onto the road, and then runs straight up the hill, and then right between the house next door to him, and then right into that same thing, for the most part. I mean, I know what the area looks like, so I'm, I'm pretty... I have a pretty good idea of where he was describing it came up, and it ran between the house next door to him, and I'm trying not to say the guy's name, but anyway, right next to their neighbor's house, and between where our trailer used to be, right into that same thicket where that thing was screaming. So it ran back up on that same hill, and this is just a week ago. Right. And that's, so, what, that's, what, that's why I wanted to reach out to somebody, you know, because I'm like, hey, you know, is there a, you know, maybe there's a, a Bigfoot researcher that lives in this area, and, you know, maybe maybe they can you know go over there and and you know start doing some research in that area. You know, that that's what oh, I'm, both I'm definitely. Like, and and we do have you know, a, a network of people around the country, and maybe we can get somebody over in that area. But um, that's pretty interesting. Four reports, probably within a mile of each other, over a thirty. Four year period, thirty three year period. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't even say within a mile of one another. They're, they're, they're all, all of them happened right behind that trailer. <laughs> so that girl's behind my house. Remember, so she's behind my house in the thicket. That's what she saw it. So probably I'm just up on the hill, a half mile. Oh, dude, the, the big foot that they saw and the one that I saw, whether there were several or one, were all within five hundred yards of one another. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so we're, we're talking a very condensed area here. Right. Um, there must be now, a little, the, well, I mean, between the berries and you were talking about the deer and other animals in the area. Yeah. Now, it definitely. Yeah, now I hunt, yeah, now I hunted that hill, all right? So, you know, like I told you, you know, just for my own therapy throughout the years, I've kind of did my own little research trying to, you know, learn more about them, make sure that I'm not crazy, that I actually saw something like this. Which I know now I'm not. Well, I know the things exist, but they're out there. But nonetheless, um, you know, I studied that area a little bit with the satellite now that we got Google Alerts and all that good stuff and was looking at that area, uh, trying to examine it. Why, why and how could something possibly, you know, kind of come up with an idea, you know, how could something that big live up there? Yeah, I remember walking back there when I was hunting and seeing these thickets that were so thick that there's no man that would want to go hunting in there. You can see deer trails running off in there, and you can see big waller, like, I remember some of the tickets, like, being folded over, and it looking like a lean-to. I mean, they were that big, you know? And I was like, there's no way I'm going to go back in there. Oh, yeah, I understand so, that. Yeah, now, so, I mean, they were so thick. Right. Now, you stated uh, that now, you live down in Texas now. Uh, oh, have, yeah, yeah. Have you uh, had any experiences down in that area? Uh, yeah, you know, this is pretty funny. It, 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 I, I, I feel like a Sasquatch magnet, but I'm not. Um, so I moved out here to check up. I've here for a long, long time now. And, you know, the, the uh, Sasquatch sighting, like I said, in West Virginia was pretty much way behind me. And, um, you know, the idea of going back out in the woods again uh, was still appealing to me. You know, I, I know there's, you know, I read the first monitor got scared by seeing one that 
you don't want to go back out to the wilderness. Uh, my father-in-law lives out here in, uh, you know, Van Zandt County, which is East Texas, near the Dutchess River, which is, you know, I didn't know anything about any Bigfoot or anything out there or nothing like that. I hadn't done any research or nothing. All I know is that there's a lot of hogs out there and that the one way you can hog hunt is you can do it at night. And so he only has, uh, I think he has 16 or 20 acres. So I knew that I had a very small area. Now he's 16 or 20 acres is, is out in the middle of a wood. So there's hundreds of acres around me that are all wood. You know, it's just that his acreage is a little fenced off or whatever. The hogs run through the fence and the deer jump over the fence or whatever. So it's not uh, inconceivable that I could hunt such small acres in the dark, you know. So I set up a feeder, I set up a stand, I put, I put me a, a game cam up, uh, I, put, I built these hog lights, what I call them hog lights, on a post, and they were hooked up to a 12 volt battery, and that allowed me to have two rifles with me. I had a Starlight scope rifle, you know, I had this, 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 uh, a rifle with a Starlight scope on it, and I, and I have a 308 that had a regular scope on it, and those hog lights allowed me to use these are effectively a starlight scope because of the light that I had, and and it allowed me to use a regular scope right around where the hot lights were because I could see the crossers in the dark. But you know, I just want to uh, I just want to kind of give you an idea uh, of what the area looks like. So my stand is about uh, probably forty or fifty yards from the uh, from the feeder. So I'm, I'm hog hunting this entire summer back there. And the one thing that I noticed right away on my game cam is that no deer, absolutely no deer go to the feeder. Now it's summertime and there's a lot of food. Um, so I'm just making the assumption that that the deer are just, maybe there's just too much in the woods to eat and they're not coming to my stand. But that, that, that's unusual. I mean, I thought that was kind of unusual. Right. And uh, there's no... What's that? And what year was this? Okay, now this was uh, this is uh, 2009, okay. so fairly fairly recent, um, and this is in the summertime. So I'm hunting every weekend. I'm going out there. Okay, every weekend I'm going out there. Now there's hogs coming in, and I finally take out one of the hogs in the dark with my starlight scope, and I'm all proud of that. Um, I did that out of a ground blind. Now once I had some success with the ground blind, that's when I actually went and bought me the, the stand for the tree. And I, mean, I had a friend of mine help me put the uh, tree stand up. Uh, it was one of the ones you sit in, you know, it's got a place you prop the rifle up on there. Which, by the way, I needed to do in the dark because it's hard, it's hard enough to hold against the enough. So, uh, you know, having a stand that had a, something around the outside of me allowed me to prop my gun up in the dark and actually, you know, make a good shot, you know. Right. And because I, I knew that I didn't have much acreage, I didn't want the animals to run off in, in the middle of nowhere because I didn't make a good place, you know, I did a good shot. So, but, uh, so anyway, I'll move on here. So you, you have a good idea uh, of maybe what my area looked like. And this happened to be, I was uh, in a power line. So the power lines is what I'm hunting, all right? That's, a power line is a part of my father-in-law's backfield. That's my setting where I'm hunting at. So, so this one night, I'm up in this tree stand, and um, I hear it coming from behind me. I know it's two deer. I mean, there could have been three, but I know for sure there's, there was two. And they were coming from me. They were running from behind me. And I'm up in this stand, all right? I'm just to describe where I'm, how I'm dressed, by the way. The bugs eat you up in the middle of the summertime. I had never hunted like that in the summertime. So I had to kind of figure out a way to hunt uh, in the summertime without getting all, all bits of peace. Uh, so I was completely covered in camouflage, not because I wanted anything to see me at night, but it's just I, didn't want, I got tired of being eaten alive. So I had gloves on, a face mask. A full suit and everything. Don't get me wrong, in Texas, it's already 100 degrees outside, so it was hot as hell. <laughs> but that's just what I had to do to, 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 to keep the animals from, or the uh, bugs from eating me up, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, so I know nothing really smelled me, and I know nothing was seeing me, all right, especially the deer. So I'm up off the ground, oh, by maybe 12 feet. So anyway, so I hear these deer coming, and they are just hauling butt through the woods, man. And they jumped the fence out off to my left. I'm looking, like I said, into the field cut, and into the, into the, uh, the cut there, which is the, the power line. They jumped the fence. I can literally hear them. Hear the feet. And then jump. And then land. And then just point off in front of me, man. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, 
I, you know, I had some other deer run like that, one, just some single ones. But these are the, the first two that really spawned in my brain. Why, why, why is that? I, you know, I, you know, I've been in cars and, and you know, we spotted deer with our headlights just checking them out and they not run. You know, they just you know, look at the headlight. But here I am, hidden in this freaking tree, 12 feet off the ground, and these deer come 50 yards from behind me and they're running full bore for no reason. And I'm thinking that I'm the problem. You know, that's what I'm thinking at the time, but I'm thinking how? So, all right, the big deer run on, and I just, you know, I'm sitting there in my stand, and, it's, and then I realize there ain't a thing. There's not, there's not a cricket. There's no hog noise, because I can normally hear them out behind me from wherever, you know, sometimes, you know, they'd come strolling through there, but they wouldn't always go to your finger or whatever. Nothing. It's completely dead. It's not a cricket, not a coyote, uh, not a raccoon. There was raccoons. All, every time I was out there, was a raccoon on my ear, pulling the corn out of it. There wasn't a raccoon. It was dead freaking quiet. There wasn't any wind blowing. It just so happened that nice, nice tech of summer night. No wind was blowing. And I'm just sitting there in the tree. I'm, you know, just sitting there in the tree wondering, wow, that is completely dead. That is crazy. So the deer come hauling by me, and that's it. And not, I'm not kidding you, not maybe 20 minutes later, dude, I hear this scream explode. I mean, it was the funniest thing. It, was, it sounded like a dry, rotted tree that had some strength to it just explode. I mean, I could hear a little bit of dent on this tree, like if you pull on like a two by four, hard enough, and you could hear it kind of like dip a little bit. I right. could hear that noise before it just exploded. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, that old saying, uh, does a tree make noise when no one's around to hear? And I just kind of laughed at myself. And I said, I guess they do make noise. I remember thinking that. But at the same time, I'm thinking, that is the weirdest thing. How does a tree just explode like that? All right? And I'm not thinking Bigfoot or Sasquatch or nothing. Like, thank God I wasn't. And I wouldn't have been put up to by myself. And, uh, but anyway, so this tree explodes. And, uh, was probably... Maybe 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, I hear something finally coming up behind my stand. And I'm thinking, I had actually thrown some corn out there in front of my stand, right there in front of it, just in case any, any hogs would come behind me, because there were some hog trails and stuff down there, that they would stop right there in front of my stand to maybe sniff or whatever. I could just shoot it right there, you know? It would be very easy, easy take out, you know? So I hear this thing coming up behind me, just real quiet, real Real quiet. Just, you, could, you know, you could hear the rustling of the leaves and all that. And, uh, and I'm sitting there waiting. Waiting for it to come out. Waiting for it to come out. And it's right behind me. I, I mean, I know it's right there. I mean, I had things crawling around the ground nights before, so I, I knew exactly what, you know, how close this thing was, you know. And I actually had a cruiser climb up in the tree with me. I turned around and looked, and it was looking at me face to face. Actually, it scared me. <laughs> 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 well, that cruiser right in your face like that. But anyway, um, so I had a good idea of how close this thing was behind me, right? And I'm thinking, it should be coming out. And it ain't coming out. And it's just gone on for three minutes now, at least. And I'm thinking, wow, that thing should have strolled out. And I'm getting a little impatient. You know? So, uh, I have a starlight scope. Now, if you know anything about starlight scopes, uh, you know, it's a first generation. It's, it's a fairly good first generation, in my opinion. I can use it to hog hunt with. Uh, but everything is either black, it's black and green. I mean, right. so if you're looking down into a black area, they don't really give you any good resolution at all. Even, even right behind you, all right? So I got this tree to my back, right? So I'm 12 feet off the ground, and I got this tree to my back. And the stand is wide enough for two people, the two people stand, but I need to turn to my left to look straight behind me. Now, the tree is about... Three feet around, two feet around, two and a half feet around, something like that. So it's as wide as me. Or whatever, two feet maybe. So it's as wide as me. So I can't really turn around behind me good enough to look straight dead behind me. It's very difficult for me to do. But I'm able to do it just enough to have the starlight scope and look down there at the ground. So I'm looking through the scope, and this thing is laying on its belly. And it has crawled up behind the tree, and I can see the length of it laying out. It wasn't very big. It was probably six feet long. Wasn't the size of my, my height. 
but it was a little bigger. It was a lot, had a lot more girth to it. It was wider than the tree. And I'm looking at this thing going, what in the hell is that? And I'm not even thinking Bigfoot or anything. Thank God I wasn't because I would have probably stained it and fell out of the tree, right? I already had my experience with the past bunch. <laughs> but, you know, looking look back, in retrospect, I know now what it was, right? So, and, and like I said, the story continues on here. So, so I'm trying to rationalize what this is. It ain't no hog, but I'm picturing it should be a hog because that's what I'm learning. And I know it ain't no freaking deer. And it shows up in my starlight stuff, like I said, it's completely black. Now, here's where it's really funny, is that, and, it, and to rationalize this, I don't know how, I mean, how you can rationalize this, but I did. So, this thing was reaching up off the ground, oh, I'll just try to describe this, so I'm about 12 feet off the ground. There's a branch down there that's probably two feet or three feet off the ground coming out of this tree, and it's real thin. It's, not, it's probably it's, it's just a thin, narrow branch, and it's real flexible, and it's right behind me. It comes all the way up right behind me, and it has just a couple crushy leaves on it, if that makes sense. Right. All right? So when I turn around to look down at this thing on the ground, this branch is looking at me in the face. All right? So this branch starts moving in front of my face. Left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. And this thing on the ground has reached up and has grabbed this branch that is, that is only a foot or two off the ground from where it was sitting and has it, I guess it had its hand on it. At the time, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't see right up against the bottom of the base of the tree exactly where it was, the head was. Uh, I could see where it was laid out across the ground, but it, it had taken their, their branch and was waving it in front of my face. And I'm sitting there watching this branch move back and forth. And remember earlier I said there's no wind? Absolutely, there's no wind. Right. I'm just, I'm sitting there looking at this branch moving back and forth, trying to rationalize why the branch is moving back and forth. Now, you'd have thought I would have been super scared out of my woods, but for some reason I wasn't. I'd been out there enough in the woods that summer uh, to pretty much thought I'd seen everything out there, you know? And uh, so uh, um, I, I sit back down in my stand. Now, I'm a pretty good hunter, and I don't shoot stuff that I don't know what it is. And I don't care if it's right there in front of me like that thing was it was behind me but you know, I wasn't just gonna pull or you know pull the trigger because I did not know what it was it, you know, does that make sense right no yeah you always make sure which yeah. target is yeah and I, and I had three weapons with me I had a pistol and uh I would have never shot it with a 17 HMR but I had a 17 HMR if you know but that's a real small caliber I had that with me and I had a 308 the 308 would have been my choice as big as, at least as wide as this thing was. Like I said, it was only about 15 feet long. Uh, so anyway, uh, I couldn't see exactly what it was. I could see that it had the form, looking back now, I could see that it had a form of a, of a man. But at the time, like I said, I was trying to rationalize it as a pig or just trying to figure out what it was, right? But anyway, so I sit back down in my stand and it puts weight in the branch and it backs back out from the same way it came in. And uh, so, I, I don't hear anything more from it that night. I, you know, I, 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 I would hunt till like four o'clock in the morning or something like that. I never did much that night. There was no other animals that came out. There was no hogs, there was no nothing. It was just completely freaking dead, quiet, silent. Now, here's where the story kind of gets a little more interesting. Uh, I wish I could have said for a fact that hey, that was a Sasquatch and whatever, but um, you know, I, I, I can't prove that exactly per se, but here's what happened the next weekend. So, uh, I think I took a Friday off or something like that. I can't remember exactly which, but I got out there, got in the stand, and this big boar came out early on in the evening. And I shot him with a 308, took him out. Uh, the sows we like to eat, the boars we just basically kill. I mean, there's so many hogs that, you know, that you just got to send them out. But anyway... Uh, so I decided to put that big boar in front of my game cam to see what would come in on. I wasn't thinking Sasquatch or anything like that. I just wanted to see what would come in and, and uh, you know, what my game cam would get pictures of. So uh, the first day, which was a Saturday or whatever, uh, you know, it must have been on TV and buzzards on my game cam. You know, now this is a couple of days later that I actually you know, took the pictures off, off my game cam. But uh, so my game, my game cam picture showed 
a lot of buzzers came in on him. Uh, a coyote came in on him. And now this hog probably weighed 270 pounds, maybe. So what, 300 pounds? Somewhere like that. Right. Uh, I didn't exactly weigh him. But he was a pretty big hog. I know this much. When I tried to pull him back to where my game cam was, I had to get my wife to help me pull him. You know? <laughs> and I weigh over 200 pounds. So he was big enough that I couldn't pull him. Uh, I was pretty pretty tuckered out trying to pull him back to the to where, where, in front of my game cam. Uh, so, um, so when I'm looking at these pictures on the game cam, and I'm watching this coyote come in, I, I got a really good perspective of how big a coyote was to this thing. It was, the coyote couldn't move this thing at all. All right, period. It wasn't happening. Matter of fact, I don't think three coyotes were going to pull it away. I mean, it had to been a pack of them to try to move this thing. And, and nonetheless, the, the uh, my game cam was able to get a picture of the coyote, you know. And I had no problem doing that. The coyote didn't care about the game cam or whatever. Uh, didn't even recognize what it was. It just ran up there and looked at the pig and then they shot it. The coyote kind of like tried to pull up the leg and then it leaves. Uh, so at night time, my camera starts taking pictures, and they're, they're blank pictures, there's nothing there. Uh, and then finally, this is what's really weird, man, I, I, this is really, really, really weird. Um, one of the shots showed the pig rolling, to, okay, so, the game cam's looking at the pig from the side. So you're actually looking at the head, the back. And it obviously its legs are up underneath each other. And this pig, the picture shows the pig rolling away from the camera. And there's nothing there. So here's a shot, one shot of just the pig, and it's dark. And the next shot is the pig rolling backward away from the game can. And then the next shot is, is you can just barely see the legs, part of the belly and back or whatever, as the pig gets pulled out into the darkness. And that's it. I got two shots of the pig being pulled away, and there's no other pig trying to eat it. There's no mountain lion trying to pull it away. There's no pack of coyotes trying to pull it away. And the afterthought of all this for me, there's always only one thing out there now that I know that had the ability to come in on something like that strategically and pull that pig back and be strong enough to do that and pull it away back towards the fence. Now, I got all the bones. I got the jaw. I kept all that. Um... But it pulled it away some 30, 40 yards. Right. And, and now we're, devouring on it. Right. Now, are these still pictures or are these video? This is two still pictures. Okay. Now, I, now I tried to enhance the pictures. and uh, I, I think I could barely see a, a, just a little bit of a eye shine on one of them. Just, I mean, so, but so less that it's, it, it might as well be a, you know, the blob squatch thing. You know? I mean, it might as well be that. But you can definitely see the pig roll out the other direction and then get yanked out into the middle of nowhere. Right. Right? It's the weirdest thing. Now, if that had been a mountain line, I'm for positive I would have seen a tail or a part of the head or, you know, the camera would have caught something like that. Right. I'm sure, you know, I mean, looking at all the other pictures, if you look at consistency, I mean, I would have, you'd have seen at least part of something. I mean, I didn't see the coyote actually leave in one of the pictures, but I saw the coyote standing there for the people. Right. Um, so, yeah, just, just so you know, I mean, uh, after the fact, you know, once I got, you know, like I told you earlier offline about when I got interested in trying to figure out my own experience by looking and reading other people's experiences, I looked up the Natchez River in Van Zandt County or, you know, on other, you know, Bigfoot websites for sightings. You know, because I knew at this point that whatever that was that came in on me that night had to have been a Sasquatch. At least that was my opinion. And lo and behold, I was shocked to see that a guy had a sighting and reported it. Not on a high, I can't remember, it was like County Road 620 or something like that. It was right behind where I was hiding. And he had, he had, he had, he had, had his, one of his dogs killed by this thing. And I didn't, I didn't read this story beforehand. This was after the fact. And when I read that, I was like, I know for a fact what came, at least in my opinion, what came in on me in the dark. Right. Now, like I said, had I had I known that after the fact, had I known that before the fact, I'd have been I'd have been pretty frightened about thinking about that the Sasquatch was right behind my tree, had reached up and grabbed this branch, and was slowly moving it in front of my face. Right. And now I'm thinking that it was trying to get me out of that tree. It was trying to get me to move. It was trying to get me to do something. But it must have been just as scared or as 
as it seemed to me as I was at least about what's going on. Well, it may have been trying to verify if it was a person up there or it was just a tree stand trying to maybe hear if there's any movement or anything. There, there's, yeah, exactly. There, there's, exactly. You know, just trying to verify, oh, hey, there's somebody else here. So, you know, I better get out of here. Now, when you said yeah, it, I, it, it you, you saw its back and its and its legs and stuff, so how would you describe this motion it was making? Uh, could you compare it to maybe like a soldier low crawling across the dirt? Or? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So picture a soldier low crawling with his head right up against the tree. Right. And most likely has taken one of the arms and has wrapped it around the bottom face of the tree. It had to have been holding on to the, all the way around the tree with, with its right arm. And with its left, and its head was literally buried up against the base of the tree. Wow. I didn't really see the, the blob of the head. And the arm had reached up. Now, if you picture, if you can see the soldier slow crawling and you look at him on the ground, he was consistent on both sides of the shoulder, right? You see one shoulder and the other one would look just like it in the dark, right? Right. You see that outline, right? That's what you expect to see. Well, with this, at least I could see that the, the uh, left arm was distorted, you know, because it wasn't in the same position as the right. Like I said, it was all dark, but I could see that it was inconsistent in my scope. You know, so I could see that floating arm reaching up. Now, like I said, at the time, I wasn't picking an arm. I didn't know what it was. I mean, but I could see how the rest of the body was laid out uh, with its legs completely together. The legs were, no, no, there was no gaps between them. They were completely pushed together. And the feet were completely together. So you can picture the, if I just laid on my belly, put my feet together with my shoes, toes sticking to the ground. That's exactly what it was looking like down there on the ground to me through my starlight scope, except that the image, everything around it was green, and it was completely black. Now, don't get me wrong, all the shadows were black that was around it as well, so, you know, it was still kind of camouflaged within the fact that there was still a lot of dark shadows on the ground, and that's just the way a, a starlight scope is. Well, right. I'm looking at the shape that's on the ground, and, and like I said, I don't just pull the trigger on something that I don't know what it is. Exactly. But that's what the shape looked like. And you know, and now, now I wish I would have pulled my pulled the trigger on it. I, I don't know. I mean, I just, it just, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, people ask me if I would ever shot one. I. I it just depends on what the incident was. I don't know. Yeah, and I agree with you on that. It's really depend on what the incident was. Um, you know, I I described you one of my encounters, and uh, I don't think I could have that day because I I felt that there was some uh, she had some juveniles with her. So yeah, it, it it's a hard decision to make, and uh, and also you know fear takes over and everything. Um, in any of these incidences that you'd had, had you ever had and uh, smell anything unusual or? That's funny, I, I have smelled absolutely nothing. Even given the fact that that one was, that I saw in 86, was walking away from me with the wind blowing in my face. I have smelled absolutely nothing. I've read those stories where people can smell them, um, and I don't doubt that they probably could have, but I, uh, even in the stillness of the dark in East Texas, I still didn't smell anything okay. whatsoever. That's cool. Well, you've um, had some amazing incidences and uh, been fortunate in some ways, probably unfortunate in others, because I understand yeah, how yeah. this affects you know affects your life in uh, different ways. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about this, and uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely get in touch with you about getting the photos and stuff and, and some of that. Okay. okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, I, I can give you the. Uh uh, GPS quarters as well on from Google or something. Oh, that'd, and, be, uh, that'd be awesome. We'd, we'd love to be know, able to catalog be, that stuff. If, if you find someone in, in the, uh, you know, in the West Virginia area, especially, for sure, uh, the East Texas area is so much private property, uh, you know, that's just the way Texas is, that it's, it's hard to do, you know, any research on there without, you know, trying to get a bunch of people, but West Virginia is a whole different story, not, not to mention the fact that that's a pretty recent location as far as someone seeing it again and you know, I could describe Oh most definitely. Yeah, that whole that whole area. I know I, I, I appreciate you letting me tell my story and, All right. and um, yeah, when, therapy. 
Yeah, it, it's always good to share these with other people, and you know, it may uh, allow other people to say, "Hey, you know, I I was in that area, not you know, between this and then, and may have experienced something also." Okay, well, yeah, we, we thank you for your time, and uh, uh, we'll keep in touch with you to try to provide more uh, evidence down the road.